Hello everybody, welcome to Craft Time at Riverdale Public Library. I'm Ms. Helen, and today we are going to make a, you know what that is, right? Yeah, it's a birdhouse. And if you have kits, you will see that you have everything you need to make the birdhouse, but I will just go over right here what is in your kit and you want to have all of that ready before you start. Um, so the first thing you're going to see probably is, are the wooden pieces that make up your birdhouse and we're going to use glue to fit them together and so you also have a little bit of glue here. Um, you will have a set of paints and you will have two brushes, a thick one and a thin one. Um, the other thing you'll need is a cup of water. So you can wash your paint brushes between using colors and um, some paper towels or newspaper to wipe your brushes on and to put your painted pieces on. Now, this one, this example here, I glued this together first and then I painted it, but it's easier if you paint first and glue later. But I'll just show you what I did here. I used um, darker colors here and I painted a little grassy pattern on the roof on this side. Um, and I painted a surprise guest on the back and we're going to see our surprise guest in a little while after we start painting. So, the first thing I want you to do is take out your pieces and lay them on paper towels or newspaper. Um, I painted some of mine already. I painted the back side here, light blue. I painted one side yellow, another side light green kind of hard to see in the video. Um, all of you have different colors. They, the sets that we gave out were, some of them were the set I have, and there are some other sets that, where the colors are a little bit different, but you all have the same amount of paint. I used a different set from the one I'm gonna use now to make this one. And each of these little pots has enough for at least one side, um, one of the larger sides. It might have enough for some of the smaller sides, but generally you want to um, use a different pot for each side. And then you can use your little brush later if you want to make some patterns on them with the rest of the paint. So the pieces you'll have, there are one, two, three, there are eight pieces. And it doesn't matter which side you, which or what order you paint them on. But what I do want you to do today though, is take one of the larger sides. It has four holes in it. There are two pieces like this. Just take one of them. And we're going to paint that one first. And you'll, you'll see why later. Um, I already painted one here, light green. And now I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna take my thick brush and I'm going to pick another color, I'll do purple, and I'm going to start painting that one. Oh, by the way, for one of these sides, I was gonna pick purple. You can use dark colors, light colors, doesn't matter. But for one of these sides, the one we're going to do first, I'd like you to choose one of the lighter colors, like yellow or light green or white, or you can mix white with another color and make it a lighter shade. But pick a light color for this first piece. Um, I'm going to take some light, some yellow here from this set. 
I think everybody has yellow. And you'll see why, it's a surprise, but you'll want that one side to be a lighter color or white, which is fine. Okay, so let's take this piece. All you do is you just need to paint one side. Doesn't matter which one, but just one. Okay, so here I am. Um, I'm going to paint using long, long strokes. And it doesn't matter if you get paint in the holes. Um, it's not going to stay there. And you can lay it. The best way to do it, of course, is to lay it down and paint. We're going to do this first before all the other pieces. And the reason why is we want it to be the first one to dry because we're going to do something else with it in a bit. Okay, so now I have painted this piece. I'm going to lay it on a paper towel to the side to dry. And now we're going to wash at our cup. Wash, unless you want to use some more yellow, um, I'm going to wash my brush. Make sure all the paint is off so we don't mix it with others. But you can mix colors here. Um, you can pretty much do anything you want with the colors. Um, so, okay, so now my brush is clean. The yellow is off. I've wiped it on paper towel or a newspaper. And we're going to choose another color. How about dark blue? I'm going to go for a dark color now. And when you're not using your colors, close them because if it flips over, all the paints are going to flip over. All of it will spill out if it's open. So let's open up our second pot of paint. Chose a dark blue. And um, let's paint the part with the hole. Okay, because that's where our bird's going to come in. All right, so you can just lay it down and paint it again with your thicker brush. Obviously, by the size of that hole, this birdhouse is not for large birds, but most of the ones hanging around your house are going to be smallish ones. And some of them actually, even though the holes look small, they know to squeeze their way in. Okay, so now I have painted the side with the door. And I'm going to wash my brush before I go on to the next one. So we now have another side that's painted. And what I did before we started today was I painted some of the other sides, as you saw. So these are painted already. And you're going to stop the tape now. 
and you're just going to paint the rest of the pieces, whatever colors you want, and then just lay them on paper towel to dry and give them about 15 minutes after you finish painting, give them at least 10, 15 minutes to dry. Okay, so I'll see you in a little bit. And when we get back, we will have all of our sides painted. See you in a bit. Welcome back everybody. Now all of our wooden pieces should be painted and you've given them about 10 or 15 minutes to dry at least. Um, and before we go on to the next part, I just would like to point something out. So, all of these sets are pretty much the same, but the front door shape, the front and the back of some sets looks different from other ones. The one that I'm using right now is shaped like this. And some of you, and the one I used yesterday, is shaped like that. And as you can see, the pink one is a little bit narrower. So if you have one like this or one like this, the, um, the part where you glue it is almost the same. Everything looks pretty much the same in the end. But if you're wondering, okay, why is the bottom of one narrow like the one I'm doing now and why is the bottom of this one wider it's because this one has the wider door and this one has the narrower door and I'm going to be gluing and finishing up the one with the narrower door okay so now since our paint on our first piece is dry we are going to welcome our special guest now our special guest is a bird and this bird thinks it's it's his house because this bird thinks everything belongs to him can you guess what bird that is he thinks he can do anything he wants he can drive a bus or he thinks he can drive a bus or he wants to drive a bus he only wants to go to sleep when he wants to and if he gets a cookie, it's his cookie, no one else's cookie, although we've heard he does share sometimes with a certain duckling. So I decided that he should be coming over to the first house we made, and here he is on the back. It is the pigeon. Welcome, everybody, to Mo Willem's Pigeon. And he has something to say, as usual, here he says, this is my house. Now, in real life, a pigeon is not going to fit in this. A little small, but he doesn't care because he thinks everything is his. So, and it's not going to the duckling because ducklings don't live in bird houses and they're also too big. So here's our pigeon. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to draw a picture of the pigeon. Okay, it's uh, just a few simple steps. And the reason why I had you paint one side first is that is the side where we're going to draw the pigeon. Now in this birdhouse, because the back was wider, I used the back. Um, in the house I'm making right now, I'm using one of the side walls, okay? And what you're gonna do is you can take a pencil to start doing this. Okay, let's just move all of our other pieces out of the way. And you're going to start out with his body. And the body of the pigeon looks like a boat. Okay, so we're going to take our piece, which is dry, and we're going to take a pencil. And we're going to draw something that looks like the bottom of a boat and then we're going to make the top but it's not going to go all the way okay 
So as you can see, I drew, I don't know, the bottom of a boat, half of a watermelon, half a circle, but I left part of it open. Okay, because that's where his neck is going to go. And our pigeon's neck is a pretty, pretty much an up and down thick line. So our next step is to There we go, now we got our line. And the last step is our head, which all of his head is just, all it is, is a circle. So if you can draw a circle, you can draw the head of the pigeon. Okay, his neck looks a little thick. Okay, so now he's got a head, but of course we know he also has a beak. And that beak is just the triangle right there. And he's got that really big eye on the side of his head, which is another circle, not right in the middle, but close to the edge. There's our circle. And then we've got his eyeball, which is kind of a circle inside that circle near the top. And then for his wing, you can just make a triangle like that. And we got his feet, which is a line and then three lines at the bottom. And we have a pigeon, but it doesn't look so good in pencil. So now since we drew him, what I did here is I took my little skinny brush, the fine brush, and I chose a dark color and I traced over the lines that I drew. So I'm going to pick a dark color here. So how about some dark blue? be black, dark blue, brown, red, anything that's going to show up well against the yellow. And we're going to take our little skinny brush and we're going to do this very, very slowly and carefully. Okay, not holding this up in the air. I'm going to lay this down flat. I'm actually going to erase that. I thought the neck was too thick, so I'm gonna erase a little bit and make it a little thinner. So now we have our neck and we have our head. Trace that big circle. his eye, the circle in the circle. Just use a little paint at a time. And we're going to fill in the eye. And our beak. And here we go. We've got our pigeon head. He also has a collar, so I'm going to add that on his neck. Right there. Or a stripe, not a collar, a stripe. There he goes. And now we can do the rest. Just use very little paint at a time. And do slowly and carefully. 
And if you do mess up, because we all mess up sometimes, and it is completely hopeless, you can always take a dark color and paint over the yellow and paint over the pigeon. Or actually, it doesn't really matter so much which side it paints on. So if you really mess up, you can always do the other side. That works too. Okay, now we're up to his wing. And now we've got the feet. One foot, 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 two feet, feet, feet. And now we're gonna wash our brush and our pigeon is done. Okay. And you know, you can do other goofy, silly things like um, in case your birds don't exactly know where to go, you can point an arrow here. And in case they can read directions, you can really be clear about where they have to go. There, on our other door, I gave our bird directions, you know, just so they know. Okay, so now you're gonna let all, whatever painting you did here dry um, if you don't feel like being silly and you just want to make a nice pattern, that's what your small brush is for. You can take one of your dry pieces and, um, for example, here I've got light green. So now I can take that small brush and I can make a pattern on it like so. I can make a frame around it. I can put stripes on it. But if you're going to paint on top of the paint, wait until the paint at the bottom is dry. Otherwise, it's going to run into each other, which can actually also be very nice looking. Um, but if you don't want it to run together, then and wait till it's dry. Although here I am drawing all these stripes and thinking, is the bird going to think it's a jail if we do that? Maybe I should do some cross stripes to make it less like a jail. You could do that too. It's a bird house, not bird jail. Okay, so now I've made a pattern. I can even fill those little squares in. I can be as plain or fancy as I want. I don't think the bird really cares, but it'll look nice. So I think we people will appreciate how nice the bird cage looks. So, all right, once all of that is dry, then it will be time to glue it together. So give it a few more minutes to anything you paint on top, whether it's the pigeon or directions or pattern, wait until that dries, get your glue ready. And the way you get your glue ready is when you open it, when it first comes out, it looks like a clear liquid. Um, it shouldn't. Um, squeeze a little bit until you actually 
have white glue coming out, okay, because the clear liquid isn't going to stick very much. Okay, so we're going to stop for a moment and let your everything else dry, get your glue ready, and um, I'll see you in a bit. Hello everyone. At this point you should have some of your pieces dry, or all of them, and we're going to start gluing them. I actually started gluing this side, okay, the side with the pigeon on it. And what I did was I took my little glue container and um, we're go I'm going to show you how I do the other side. Basically, it works each time. The wooden pieces have pegs on them and basically you're fitting the pegs together. But those pegs need to be covered in glue. It's okay if it's extra glue because it won't show when it dries. So let's just glue on the other wall to the pegs on this side. And once I do that, I'm going to stop the tape. You're going to um, stop the tape and you're going to only glue one or two walls at a time. Because if you try to glue the rest before it's dry, the whole thing will fall apart. So what I did was I glued this side. Um, I propped it against a bottle because it leans a little bit. And um, once it, now that it's dry, I can do this side. So let's open our glue. And um, find our other wall, which is right here, the thing with the green, yellow and green. Okay. Um, and we're going to start by putting glue on the pegs. Okay. Oops, fell over, but it's dry, so it's okay. So we're going to glue all four of the pegs here. I'm going to show you how much glue I put on there. I put on quite a bit. So at that point, you can see all that white glue there, okay? And we're going to take a finger or a brush or straw and just make sure the glue is covering the sides of those pegs. It is well coated in glue. Okay, And then we're going to take the wall that we're doing here. Make sure your painted part is outside. And you can see this has four holes in it. And you're going to fit those holes onto the pegs. It can be a little tricky. Um, and if you're having trouble, just take it off, start over again. Um, but again, it's important that you only glue a, f a little bit at a time because you don't want anything falling apart. So I'm going to lean this over. I'm going to let's move this down so you can see. And I'm going to fit my the pegs into the holes. One side at a time. Click, that's when you know it fit. There you go. Okay, and I'm going to turn it around. Our pigeon's still there. <laughs> and I'm going to do the other side. Click. And now I have. 
have both sides glued on. Okay, now it looks kind of like a little basket. Okay, and you're gonna let that dry. And after you have that dry, you are going to do the, you're gonna glue it to the base. Okay, and for those of you who have this, the narrower um, door, you're gonna have a piece like this. You're gonna have a wider piece um, if you have a set like this and the wider like that. But both of them have just two holes, so it glues the same way. Um, so when that dries, you're gonna take the bottom, and in this case, you're gonna turn the bottom over because this is the, the part that's gonna be inside and nobody's going to see that but the bird. So um, you want the painted side in this case on the bottom. All right, this is yellow. And so we're gonna wait a moment, we're gonna wait for the rest to dry and then we're gonna glue that together. Okay, now we're going to glue the um, house, which still has no roof, onto the base. And we can just flip over our little house for a moment so that we can put glue on the pegs at the bottom of that house. Okay, so here's our glue. Let's make sure the peg is covered in it. And again, you can use your finger or brush to or pencil to make sure that that little peg is covered. Okay, and now we're going to take our base. Now remember the outside of the base is the part with the color, so we're going to put that here and make sure that the part that's not painted is going inside. And again, we're going to fit the um, board onto the pegs until they click. I hear a click. I hear, don't hear another click. I heard one click. As soon as you have to turn it over and make sure that the peg is lined up with the hole. There we go. There's a click. Okay. So now we are almost there. And we can actually, while we're waiting for that to dry, um, I'm going to show you how the roof works. Okay, the roof is in two pieces. Um, and we're going to start by gluing um, the bigger piece. All right. Um, and that actually the, has five holes in it. Okay. There's a hole in the middle, which we'll get to that last. There's two at the top and there's two on the side. Okay. We're going to be thinking about the ones on the side. All right. And, but the pegs are not there. The pegs are actually on the wall of the house. So, I mean, on the front and back walls of the house, you can see right there, there's our two pegs, one, two. So we want to cover those with glue. But just one side, because we're only putting on one side of the roof right now. Okay. Make sure the glue is covering the peg. Even if there's extra, that's okay. And we're going to make sure your round hole is at the top when you glue on, glue the roof on. Okay. And we are now going to fit those two holes in the side. Click, I hear one click. I hear the other click. And now our roof, half of our roof is on, not quite. 
And now we're going to do this side of the roof. Now, this side of the roof has two pegs on the top, and those two pegs are going to fit into these holes right here, this side. Okay. And it also has two on the side. So we're going to, while the glue is still wet, um, we're going to pull back, we're going to attach it to this side. And then once that, that is attached, click it onto the two sides with the pegs. So let's get our glue onto the pegs. Make sure they're covered. Okay. And we're going to put them in the top pegs until you hear a click. Again, since so you have to look around, line them up, make sure they're lined up with the actual hole. And they went right, they didn't click, but actually they did go right in. And you can tell because now you can see the glue on the other side, kind of. So they are in. And then you're going to, oops, you know what, I, I made a mistake. I'm going to take that out for a moment. I'm going to put glue on all four pegs. That was my mistake. So I'm going to put glue on the pegs on here. And then I'm going to put, the, there's two pegs sticking out right here. I'm going to put glue on those. And then we're going to glue that piece on. But it's going to go top in first. And, and it might click, it might not. And then actually it fit right in without clicking in this case. And now we have it all together. Okay, so you've got your roof on. You've got that little excess glue, but it'll dry. We've got our pigeon in the shade and we have our door okay and at this point if you want to take your paint and you know add in where we missed on the side on the bottom you can do that okay um but wait till the glue dries before doing that and the other thing the last step actually is your your kits have a piece of string at the top and you're going to stick them through the round holes on the roof and that way um, if you want to hang it up you will be able to do that I have some yarn here so you're gonna um, just loop it through and um, once you do, you're, you've got a stiffer one. You've got um, a very strong rope. So you're going to loop it through the top. You might need a pencil or something to do that. And once you do, you can tie it under a tree or under something on your porch and your birdhouse will be ready. So enjoy. Enjoy making the rest of your craft. Bye, everyone.